Amazon and Shopify stores, you know, building an online e-commerce business. And that's where I'm going to pass the mic over to Alex to literally give us a real life case study here using me, your very own finance geek, right? Yeah. So Alex, you have the floor, my friend, uh, to share really what you've been able to do for some of my clients that may be on the call right now that you're working with. Um, and you're also helping and, and, and working with me. So, uh, yeah, floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And uh, I want to start by saying I'm really excited about this ministry because I've been talking about it with Denzel for, I mean, maybe like a year, right, Denzel? Like maybe 10 months or so? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm going to be here every meeting. I hope to see everybody else here every single first Friday of the month and last Friday of the month. And I uh, want to share, you guys are seeing this for the first time. This is the first kind of uh, launch of this store. And as Denzel mentioned, I've been helping a few clients recently of his with Amazon store businesses. I've been doing this for about four and a half, five years because I had clients like when I started the company that had Amazon store businesses, had Shopify stores, and they needed help with the marketing. So I helped them with their marketing and I learned what it takes to build a pretty much passive Amazon store and or Shopify store. So I got the insight into already successful businesses and I figured out how to reverse engineer, let's say a successful Amazon store and do it from day one. Um, Red Bull, this is a good story. Red Bull is actually a drop shipping company. I don't know if you knew that Denzel, but it's a branded drop shipping company. They don't manufacture any of their drinks, any of their products, um, but they're a great marketing company. They sponsor all of these different extreme sports and UFC and things like that, things that their the customer would like. And they market their products, they do not manufacture them. And that's the model that I have with my clients where we create sort of a premium brand, selling coffee, there's baby products, there's pet products. There's clothing, apparel, yoga mats. It's really anything under the sun. And the key is that we don't have to spend money up front on the product, right? Because if I told you spend $25,000 on yoga mats or some shirts that we don't guarantee are going to sell, that's a bit tough risk wise. But if I say, hey, let's put 50, 75, even 100 products on your store. And out of those 50, maybe 10 or 12 of them are going to kill it. That's a good risk. And so that's really the model that I took from these successful clients years ago when I started the company. And just from looking at Red Bull, I'm like, huh, it's really just a marketing company that puts their brand, puts their designs on different products and they market it well as a premium product and they facilitate the transaction. They charge 25 bucks for a shirt and they get it facilitated by another company for 12 and they keep everything in the middle as profit. And so um, I've had many stores in the past, but it's been a recent offer helping Denzel's clients. And then now Denzel has his own store. So Denzel, if I can share my screen, I'd love to show your store. Okay, let me give you uh, the ability to do that. Let's see. I think I have to make you a host, right? Yeah, I think last time. I don't know if you made me a host. Maybe. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Here we go. Now try it. All right, perfect. All right. So the years are the first people seeing this store. This is Denzel's store. And as an example, look at all these different products that are on there. You're looking at beach towels. You're looking at a baby kind of one piece, cute short sleeve, the quality napkins, bento lunchbox. And again, Denzel hasn't had to spend, you know, tens of thousands on buying this stuff, storing it. He doesn't have to ship it manually. It's all drop shipping. And so, like I said, the key with Denzel, he's a bit different in the sense that he has a brand, right? He's the finance geek, but I have other clients of mine that come to me and say, hey, Alex, I have really no brand. I have no idea what I want to sell. Um, let's start an Amazon store. So what we do is we say, okay, here are some concepts that we can come up with. Maybe it's coffee. Maybe it's, like I said, yoga mats. Maybe it's notebooks. Maybe it's coffee mugs, phone cases. And we come up with like a nice premium logo, brand store concept, everything like that. And then we build a brand for them. And that's where you have the real long-term value because most dropshipping companies, they try to race to the bottom, meaning they try to look for generic products like generic headphones or speakers 
or you know toothpaste things like that that don't have any real brand to them and they're trying to make pennies by selling a lot of them but my model is different where it's like hey we're trying to sell premium products with cool designs um, quality materials quality ingredients for coffee as an example and we're trying to charge a higher price to get profit in the middle but at the same time attract a different type of consumer that maybe has more money that's willing to spend more on quality and that's going to come back that's what I'm saying as Red Bull, as an example, it's really just a marketing company. Like I said, they don't manufacture any of their products at Publix or at Walmart that you see. They don't own any manufacturing. They're just marketing the Red Bull brand and they're selling energy drinks that somebody else manufactures, but their brand is so strong that people know Red Bull and they wanna buy something that they know. So similar to this type of business model, I help my clients build a brand that people recognize over time, people like, they recognize the quality, they like the designs, everything along those lines. And they eventually want to come back, refer friends, family to buy products. And that's why my client stores that I've seen that I started years ago, they kind of grow like a compounding stock where they get better with time. They age like wine in the sense that they have more referrals, more repeat customers, and they have to spend, as time goes on, less on advertising because they have a real brand. You know, like Denzel, like that's an example. He has a brand, people trust him, people like him, he has credibility. Same thing with your potential Amazon store. Once people buy your products, they see the quality, they see the customer service, um, they're gonna come back and wanna buy more. And I think the biggest thing is that for my customers, this is 100% passive because it's a lot of work to set up, okay, what's the store gonna be about? All these different products, the technology, what software to use, all this stuff. And I'm sure you guys have a job or a business, you guys have family, going to the gym, eating. I mean, there's not a lot of time left in the day to figure all this stuff out. So that's kind of where this is really the best passive business model that's out there based on the service that we provide and the least amount of risk because all these different products that you see on the screen, Denzel has bought zero of them. Now, I'm sure he's gonna buy some for himself, but at the same time, risk-wise, he can list as many products as he wants or as little as he wants um, based on what designs that we want on the store. And of course, if we list all of these, maybe you know 25%, 30% of them are best sellers. And so for you guys, that's where you want to look at that as a passive income business model, where even if it's not with us, somebody else, or maybe you tried on your own, once you set it up correctly, once you have a good brand, good products, it grows over time organically. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically it. Denzel, any other things to add? Yeah, I would say um, if you have another example, maybe mm -hmm. that you could show, just to kind of give a little insight, just kind of like the differences. And then I would like you to go into saying, all right, who is this not for? Because I, I have had uh, some people reach out and I think my mic just shut off. All right. How's my mic now? Good. Okay. Yeah. So um, I've had people ask me through email and they're like, hey, is this guy, is this Alex guy legit? Um, you know, should I do this? Should I wait? Um, you know, how much money am I going to make within the first, you know, six months, one year? Is it guaranteed? Is it not guaranteed? So kind of, kind of go through really kind of ironing out like, Hey, if you're doing velocity banking, or if you're paying down debt, if you don't have the cash flow up front um, of X amount of dollars, you should probably, you know, wait, you know, or kind of just walk us through that. And then another example, if you will. Yeah. So I can pull up the example, but I do want to mention the points that you mentioned about I think it's a good fit for the majority, but the minority that it isn't a good fit for, I would say they're in the position that they're like struggling financially. I think there is a distinction between somebody who's, let's say, in the middle and yeah. somebody who's thriving versus somebody who like can't pay the bills. Yeah. I wouldn't say that it's a great fit. I think. Are you sharing your screen fit. right now? Um, not. Oh, yeah. I think I'm sharing my screen okay. because. Um, yeah, well, I had a whiteboard. I just want to break down some of the numbers that I've seen with past clients just to get people. Yeah. An okay, idea. cool. All right. So let me go right. back to the whiteboard. Floor is yours, and I'm going to spotlight you again. So, all right. So now it kind of went away. Well, let me stop the share. I can go back to the whiteboard. Um, but I think the biggest thing is I don't want to have clients that are struggling where it's like, hey, I can't even really pay my bills. Is this going to work next month? No. 
It's not going to be a one month thing or a two month thing. I mean, the initial program is a year because in the first three months, we're just setting up the store, right? We're creating something from nothing. We're creating a logo, store name options, branding, designs, the technology on the back end, setting up the store. Um, it's definitely a time consuming thing to just get it off the ground. So let's say that's three months. The initial three months after launching the store, I wouldn't expect to make much profit either. It's just testing. We're trying to test and see what products are working, which ones aren't, because again, it's a marketing company. We're not having to risk money for inventory, but at the same time, there's no guarantee in terms of what's selling and what's not. So we have to put the products out there, test and see our mugs selling, our bag selling, our shirts selling, are certain designs doing well or not doing well? Let's adjust based on that. Now, month six to 12 is where like clients have been in the past, as you know, an example, that's where they've started to start to see the real income growth because sales is a very misleading number. I mean, I could say my clients have made a million dollars in sales with their store, but what's the actual take home profit on that? Right. So I don't like to mention sales. I talk about after returns, after expenses, Amazon fees, all the fees involved. What's the actual net profit? So I like to try to aim for months six to 12 being about three to five, six thousand. But let's even say conservatively three to four in the first, let's say, year, six months, six through 12. Um, because again, it's passive. It's not designed to be a million dollar business. Right. It's more so consistency predictability, reliability on the passive side and growing it from, let's say, years one to two, two to three, et cetera. That's really the goal with this business is to look at it as a long term asset cash flow wise. Same thing with real estate. You're not necessarily going to buy a piece of real estate and then immediately start killing it with cash flow right. in the first few months, even in the first six months. So that's how I like to look at clients where like if this is going to be a struggle, going back to your question, if this is going to be a struggle for you to pay for and you need the money like next month, I don't think that's really a good fit. Um, and at the same time, if a client wants to make like significant income, like I want to make 25,000 a month or 30,000 a month, it's like, it's just not necessarily what we strive for in the first year. Who knows, maybe in years two, three or four, once they start to self-manage it, which we teach them to do, but that's a bit tough from like, you, you should probably start your own business that's maybe higher risk, high reward to get that type of income. But with this, it's more of a passive income model where instead of investing in stocks or index funds or real estate or crypto, I look at this as an alternative to that where we're not trying to hit a home run, we're trying to hit like a double, right? Like the first six months, don't even really think about them. The next six months, let's hit like three to 4,000 a month, but then years two, three, four, et cetera, that's where the returns can compound and over time grow from there. Um, so I would say that's how you want to look at expectations realistically yeah. and risk. Like I'm saying, if you have $10,000 in your bank account, I don't know if it's the best fit. Maybe if you have, you know, 20, 30, or you have some credit, you can get creative because like I said, it's not necessarily something that's going to make you your money back instantly. So you want to make sure if you're going to make an investment, you don't want to be using all debt or if not too much debt to where then it starts to eat into your passive income from the business, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's clear. Yeah. I had a client, um, pastor and you know, he's got some money saved emergency fund. He's paying off debt. We had a whole strategy together and I was like, yeah, you know what Alex is doing is legit and all, but it just may not be the right timing. So let's exactly. keep doing velocity banking. Let's knock down these debts over here. Let's build a credit up. Let's, you know, maybe put the policy in place that you wanted to do. Let's, let's kind of get that foundationally set. And then when we're ready to make a 5,000, 10,000 investment, cause that's about the price range to do this, right? Around five, 10. Yeah. I would say closer to 10 because that includes the marketing spend, Amazon store fees. It just, it's all inclusive because um, a common question I get is why would my store not be successful? I mean, nothing is a hundred percent successful, which is a hundred percent true. I would say two reasons why I've seen client stores in the past not be successful. Uh, number one, they don't have the marketing spend because let's say they want to come in at like a low price point of, I only have 6,000 or 5,000 or whatever, 6,500. I would say, look, let's get started on the store, but that doesn't include marketing spend, which is thousands, right? To really get it off the ground. And they say, okay, I'll have that ready to go in like three to four months once we launch the store, if not, you know, two and a half months. 
Um, but then the time comes around and they say, oh, no, I don't have that. I thought that was included or, oh, mm -hmm. can we, you know, work something out? Can we just try it with no marketing and see what happens? And I'm like, well, that's not really what we discussed. Like if we have a Ferrari, we need gasoline. That's my best analogy where you can't necessarily have an amazing store without any marketing spend. You need right. the marketing spend to boost it initially and get the initial sales going, um, especially on Amazon. So I'd say that's reason number one, lack of marketing spend. So that's why that more like $9,800 package that has the marketing spend all included. Um, so that's always the one I recommend. Number two, a client comes in with an idea that I off the bat say, I don't think that will work. Simply put, maybe it's a niche that's too small or they say, oh, I want to have like these two products on my store. That's it. And I'm like, yeah, from what I've seen, I, I just don't think that's going to work. But they say, doesn't matter. Let's do it anyway. And it's like, well, we're offering a service and you're a client so we can right. help you do that. But I'm recommending that you do not go this route. And they still do. I mean, some people, you know, it's it's an ego thing. It's maybe they have a dream in their mind, but they don't really want to listen to an expert tell them something. Um, so I would say those are the two reasons why hypothetically somebody coming in would say, oh, maybe is it not going to be successful? What are the reasons why? And from my experience, those are the only two reasons realistically um, why a store hasn't been successful. Because of yeah. course, I could talk about my best case scenarios, case studies. I could show you another store. But it is good to talk about like coming in with these expectations. And of course, like you're saying, financially, timing does matter. I mean, I had somebody that wanted to sign up, but I told them, I think based on this discussion, based on where you're at, let's talk in January, right? Because for me, I'd rather have somebody that waits a few months, waits four or five months, and that once they join then, then they can just relax. They can be patient. Right. I don't necessarily want somebody to sign up and it's like, oh, we need this to work like ASAP, like by next month. It's like, mm, it's just not that type of model. It takes time to build. So, yeah. And I, yeah. I, I would I would say for me and there's a question that came in, you know, would you say mm -hmm. the, the bigger your brand is, the faster the takeoff would be? And I would I would think absolutely. Right. Tremendous. And mm -hmm. and I would I would say, you know what, let's use me as a case study. Right. <clears throat> Where, you know, I've got about a little over 44,000 subscribers on YouTube, right? A couple thousand on Instagram, thousand or so on LinkedIn, thousand or so on Facebook. So if I was to, you know, add up all the social medias I'm on, that's maybe about maybe 50,000 or so uh, total followers, right? Mm -hmm. And let's, let's map out like month to month and then maybe we could put some kind of document together as to mm -hmm. how much money my store makes and then what the net, you know, uh result would be after expenses just so we can pr provide that full transparency and i'm coming into the mindset of yeah i don't i don't expect this store to make really much maybe a couple hundred dollars from my my loyal subscribers and my my mm -hmm. my clients that are like yeah i'm gonna buy that shirt and buy this mug and and support you um but other than my base followers and clients and community i i need to have marketing dollars that i want to throw into it so i would say that if you have a brand already then your need for marketing spend probably goes down a little bit less you could probably ride on your existing you know uh, uh social media followers and kind of see how that goes and that's my that's my plan i'm not looking to put any marketing into it yet because it's not really a focus of mine i just want to build it i want to experience it i want to see how it how it goes with mm -hmm. just the brand that I've already built over the last four years, right? And let's see what that produces, right? Full transparency. Like even if it produces a couple hundred dollars a month, to me, that's amazing because Half now in my whole. brain, yeah, mm -hmm. in my brain, I think 20, 40 years, 50 years down the road, that's, that's $500,000 a month additional. I didn't have to work for, mm -hmm. right? That's how I'm looking at it. And then that's the correct mindset. As long as clients have that saying, like you're saying long term too, like the first six months, nothing. I recommend thinking that the next six months, we want to see some pretty decent income growth and net profit growth. Once we find the best sellers, that's really the key. 
is every store, like I said, we can list 50 products, but out of those 50, if we find even five that absolutely kill it, then we can promote those heavily, put marketing spend into those, and we understand what the profit is and we can really project net income, like you're saying. But that takes, that's month six to 12, and it's 100% passive then. And something also I wanna add, even after 12 months, some clients ask, well, I don't wanna self-manage. What can we do as a solution? And I don't wanna upsell them into something else. I wanna say, look, here's a virtual assistant. Let me train them, let me onboard them onto your store. From the Philippines, five bucks an hour, hardworking, very good English speakers, very efficient. Let me train them, onboard them, put them onto your store for like a hundred bucks a month and they can manage the store for you. So there's always a solution to keep it passive. Um, because that's a common question that I've gotten with a lot of clients is, what if I don't want to self-manage it after the first year? And I'm not going to say, oh, pay us another, what, 9,800 and we'll keep managing it. The goal is for it to be 9,800 to where we get the store, you have the marketing, you have everything included and the training on the back end of it. That's the key. And if not the training, you get the VA that we train for you and you can build that into the business model. Um, so like you're saying, the passive income side looked at in a year, it's like, eh, like it's not a crazy amount of money but the passive aspect of it and the long-term aspect, even over 10 years, that's definitely a significant amount of money, especially relative to what else is out there with yeah. stocks and real estate and crypto. Um, this is not necessarily a value gain. Like you're not going to put in 9,800 and then sell it for a million dollars. It's more the cash flow. That's the key, the passive cash flow.